road. The drive has been pretty abu simple. No, get it? See what I did? No. morning up in Adam. Early to rise this morning we are taking a car service out to the Abu Simbel Temple Complex which is about three and a half hours drive to the south of here. It is very close to the border with Sudan. I think about 40 kilometers which is this many miles for my American viewers. About an hour or two at the temples and then a really long boring drive back and then tonight I guess another sunset. We'll see what happens. Uh, let's go to Abu Simbel. Mustafa is our guide. Say hello. hello. All right, on our way to Abu Simbel. On the sides of the road right now, we're about 30 minutes in and lots of sand and rocks. Um, I'll let you know if that changes, but 30 minutes in, about two and a half hours to go. Abu Simbel coming up. into the drive about an hour left we stopped so that we could go to the bathroom at the supermarket behind us he's got sodas waters juices some chips it's literally the only place we've seen on the entire drive Abu Simbel Road goes all the way to Abu Simbel um, and about an hour left but right here it's amazing this, this landscape it's chilly out it's about 64 degrees it's supposed to go up to 85 today um, but very easy our driver's been great so has Mustafa Let's continue onward to Abu Simbel. At the rest stop, I wasn't going to buy anything, but they had these unique flavors of Schweppes soda. This is pineapple. Raul got pomegranate. Please show the viewers. All right, pomegranate pineapple. We're just about three hours in. Just a little bit more time. We stopped to go get drinks and use the bathroom, but almost there. Um, it is rocky and hilly and sandy now. Um, almost. So by now you know that it took us forever to get here. It is three hours, three and a half hours south of Aswan. The temple was built on this location because it is the southernmost reaches of the Egyptian Empire. So it was built as a show of force or strength so that it could intimidate the enemies of Egypt. Anybody coming into the Egyptian Empire. Fun fact. Alright, if you can see behind me, 
this is definitely where the landscape changes. This is Lake Nasser. It is a lake that was formed in the 1950s after they put up the Aswan Dam. The Aswan Dam formed this lake behind me and the lake was to go over the original location of the Abu Simbel Temple. The Egyptian government didn't want to see it disappear, so they moved the temple. So the structure you're about to see is actually moved to this location so that it saved it from being underneath the lake here. Let's check it out. Okay, we're on our way to the temple. He said the temple was built between 1264 and 1244. I don't know if you can see me or how awful my hair looks. The temple was built between 1264 and 1244, so it took just over 21 years to build. And the lake was started construction in 1961. Um, behind me you can see lots of people selling stuff. Want a hat? Mustafa was just telling us that the temple was removed from the bottom of the lake bed stone by stone. Each stone had to be numbered for position and for location so that they could move it precisely to the location that it is now so that it's in the exact same condition. And uh, every stone is in the same position. It's pretty cool. It seems like a really arduous task, but the temple was obviously so important that they didn't want it to be submerged and lost forever. So we're coming around the bend and I think it's just beyond here. Let's see it. All right, so that was the inside of Abu Simbel Temple to Ramses II. At night, we were just talking to Mustafa, he said the entire thing is lit up. I'm sure it looks amazing. Maybe if I remember, I will put a picture in right here. Isn't that amazing? All right, off to the small temple of his wife, Nefertari, also featured in the Ten Commandments. So Raul and I just got back from our trip to Abu Simbel. Great tour, came back up to the room, and look what the hotel provided for us. Egyptian goodies, and a basket of fruit that we'll never finish. Amazing, great hotel. All right, rest of the afternoon, plans are we're gonna see the sunset, that Aswan sunset is amazing. We're gonna get some food, maybe go to the gym, and and we also have to figure out how we're going to get to Luxor. We were going to take a car service, 
Uh, we thought about taking a train. The train to Luxor is either at 5.30 or 7.30 a.m., which means we have to get up very early again, so I'm not sure we want to do that, but the train is a lot cheaper and probably a better experience than the car. I'll let you know more when we think about it, but right now I think I'm going to go downstairs and look to find something for my mom from the souvenir store. Um, okay, let's go. This may be the first time I've ever had a meal that was decorated with a potato chip. Okay, back at the hotel. Um, actually back in the hotel room. Absolutely fantastic evening. Um, and then we grabbed dinner just at the hotel. It seems a lot of the restaurants are on the island in the middle of the Nile River called Elephantine Island and you need to take a ferry over. I wasn't about putting that much effort into it. I know, I know, but I just wasn't feeling it. So came back, showered, took some night footage of the pool and the buildings, which I think I showed you in this video, maybe in the one before this, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to feature the hotel, but the hotel was amazing. The trip today was amazing. Definitely, if you get a chance, don't skip Aswan and don't skip Abu Simbel. It's absolutely fantastic to me that they moved every piece of that temple, brick by brick, actually granite and limestone and granite by limestone and granite, piece by piece, all the way to the current location so that they could save it. Fantastic, good job by the Egyptian government because it is well worth saving. The inside of that temple surprised me completely. I didn't think we could go inside. It was unbelievable, I was so happy that we went. The car ride is a bit boring, I'm not gonna lie. It's a lot of sand, a lot of rocks, all the way out, three hours and change, three hours and change back. The driver was great, he went a little faster than he should, but it was great, and uh, Mustafa was great, he was our guide. Um, I'm going to put his link to his company if you want to take a tour in Aswan or in and around Egypt. It's down there in the comments section, so make sure you check that out. Um, his Instagram is also going to be there, so give him a follow. Tomorrow our plan was to go to Luxor by car. We used a car service page and I in the Balkans, and it was very convenient. They're charging $200 to get from Aswan to Luxor. It's a four-hour car ride. Then the concierge actually at our hotel recommended that we take a train. I didn't know that there was a daytime train, uh, but there is. It is a short three hour ride and it cost us about 100 pounds, Egyptian pounds. That is this much in American dollars, I think around $6. Um, worth it. So I hope the train ride's good. I hope it's relaxing. I hope it's a nice train. But of course, I'm going to put that all on film. You'll all see it in the next video. Um, and then off to Luxor exploring Temple of Karnak, I think, tomorrow. All right. I think that's it. Okay. That said, thanks for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to hit the like button, please. And if you really want to follow along, you want to see next video, click subscribe. I love it when people subscribe. I wish I can see you if you have your preferences set that way. Leave a comment. I promise I'll respond to the comments. I love the comments. Um, and uh, have a great night, everyone, from last night in Aswan, Egypt. Take care, you guys.